The Life and Sad Ending of Claude Rains William Claude Rains was born on November 10, 1889, in Clapham, London. His parents were Emily Eliza and the stage actor Frederick William Rains. He lived in the sums of London, in his own words. Rains was one of twelve children, all but three dying of malnutrition when still infants. His mother took in boarders in order to support the family. Rains grew up with a, quote, very serious Cockney accent and a speech impediment, which took the form of a stutter, causing him to call himself Willie Waynes. Rains left school after the second grade to sell newspapers so that he could bring the pennies and half pennies home for his mother. He sang in the Palm Street Church Choir, which also brought him a few pence to take home. Because his father was an actor, the young Rains would spend time in theaters and be surrounded by actors and stagehands. There, he observed actors as well as the day-to-day running of a theater. Rains made his stage debut at age 10 in the play Sweet Nell of Old Dury at the Haymarket Theater so that he could run around on stage as part of the production. He slowly worked his way up in the theater, becoming a callboy at His Majesty's Theater and later a prompter, stage manager, understudy, and then moving on from smaller parts with good reviews to larger, better parts. Rains moved to America in 1913 due to the opportunities that were being offered in the New York theaters. However, at the outbreak of World War I the following year, he returned to England to serve in the London Scottish Regiment alongside fellow actors Basil Rothbone, Ronald Coleman, Herbert Marshall, and Cedric Hardwick. In November 1916, Rain was was involved in a gas attack at Vimy, which resulted in him permanently losing 90% of the vision in his right eye, as well as suffering vocal cord damage. He never returned to combat, but continued to serve with the Bedfordshire Regiment. By the end of the war, he had risen to the rank of captain. After the war ended, Rains remained in England and continued to develop his acting talents. These talents were recognized by Sir Herbert Beerbohm Tree, the founder of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Tree told Rains that in order to succeed as an actor, he would have to get rid of his cockney accent and a speech impediment. With this in mind, Tree paid for the elocution books and lessons that Rains needed to help him change his voice. Rains eventually shed his accent and speech impediment after practicing every day. Soon after changing his accent, he became recognized as one of the leading stage actors in London. At age 29, he played the role of Clark in his one and only silent film, the British film Build Thy House, 1920. In London theatre, he achieved success in the title role of John Drinkwater's play Ulysses S. Grant, the follow-up to the same playwright's Abraham Lincoln. Rains portrayed Falkland in Richard Brinsley Sheridan's The Rivals, presented at the London's Lyric Theatre in 1925. He returned to New York City in 1927 and appeared in nearly 20 Broadway roles, in plays which included George Bernard Shaw's The Apple Cart and dramatizations of The Constant Niff and Pearl S. Buck's novel The Good Earth as a Chinese farmer. Although he had played the single supporting role in the silent Build Thy House, 1920, Rains came relatively late to film acting. While working for the Theatre Guild, he was offered a screen test with Universal Pictures in 1932. His screen test for A Bill of Divorcement, 1932, for a New York representative RKO, was a failure, but led to his being cast in the title role of James Wales' The Invisible Man. 1933, after his screen test and unique voice were inadvertently overheard from the next room. Then Rains signed a long-term contract with Warner Brothers on November 27, 1935, with Warner able to exercise the right to loan him to other studios and Rains having a potential income of up to $750,000 over seven years. He played the villainous role of Prince John in The Adventures of Robin Hood, 1938. On loan to Columbia Pictures, he portrayed a corrupt U.S. Senator in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, 1939, for which he received his first Academy Award nomination as Best Supporting Actor. 
For Warner Brothers, he played Dr. Alexander Tower, who commits murder-suicide to spare his daughter a life of insanity in King's Row, 1942. And the cynical police chief, Captain Reynolds in Casablanca, also 1942. On Lone Again, Reigns played the title character in Universal's remake of Phantom of the Opera, 1943. Reigns became the first actor to receive a million dollar salary when he portrayed Julius Caesar in a large budget but unsuccessful version of Shaw's Caesar and Cleopatra, 1945, filmed in Britain. Shaw apparently chose him for the part, although Reigns intensely disliked Gabriel Pascal, the film's director and producer. Reigns followed it with Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious, 1946, as a refugee Nazi agent opposite Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman. Back in Britain, he appeared in David Lean's The Passionate Friends, 1949. Reigns remained active as a character actor in the 1950s and 1960s, appearing in films and as a guest in television series. He ventured into science fiction for Irwin Shaw's The Lost World, 1960, and Antonio Margaretti's Battle of the Worlds, 1961. Two of his late screen roles were as Dryden, a cynical British diplomat in Lawrence of Arabia, 1962, and King Herod in The Greatest Story Ever Told, 1965, his last film. In CBS's Rawhide, he portrayed Alexander Langford, an attorney in a ghost town, in the episode Incident of Judgment Day, 1963. In his personal life, Reigns became a naturalized citizen of the United States in 1939. He habitually married, marrying six times, and was divorced from the first five of his wives. Isabel Jeans, married 1913 to 1915. Mary Hemingway, to whom Reigns was married for less than a year in 1920. Beatrix Thompson, 1942 to April 8, 1935. Francis Proper, April 9, 1935 to 1956. And the classical pianist, A.G. Jambor, 4th of November, 1959 to 1960. In 1960, he married Rosemary Clark Schrode, to whom he was married until her death on December 31, 1964. His only child, Jennifer, was born on the 24th of January, 1938, the daughter of Francis Proper. As an actress, she is known as Jessica Raines. In his final years, Reigns decided to write his memoirs and engage the help of journalist Jonathan Root to assist him. Reigns' declining health delayed their completion, and with Root's death in March 1967, the project was never completed. Sadly, Reigns died from abdominal hemorrhage in Laconia on May 30, 1967, age 77. He was buried at the Red Cemetery in Moultonboro, New Hampshire.